We're believing tonight is going to be a great night in the presence of the Lord. So tonight, let's take off every limitation. Every limitation, we take it off of you tonight, our King. And we're believing you for great things. We know you're God and that you're good. Miracles are what you do. Saving is what you do. Delivering is what you do. Rescuing is what you do. And we're believing for you to be God tonight in the room. We lift up our faith. Come on, believers, put your faith out there tonight. Father, you promised that miracles, signs, and wonders would follow those that believe. As we lift you up, all we got to do is look over our shoulder and here comes a miracle. Here comes a miracle. Looking over my other shoulder, here comes a, a miracle. Here comes a healing. Here comes an open door. Here comes a way when you didn't see a way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. With our faith and with our expectation. Woo! Hallelujah! 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 Great and mighty are you, Lord! Great and mighty are you, Lord! Now come on in unity, let's send up a shout of praise and expectation. Hey! Come on, let's worship him tonight. Nothing excites us like Jesus. Say, cause in his presence is free. Yeah. All of our sin is forgiven. So we give. So we give to him the highest. Testify right here. It's the greatest. It's the greatest. Uh -huh. feeling. When you feel this place. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. In this moment. You are moving. You are moving. As we give you.
your majesty. Oh, come on, would you magnify the Lord with us tonight? Come on, let's make him bigger than what you did at work today. Let's make him bigger than any obstacles we're facing. Let's focus on the goodness of our God. thank you that as a believer we are never stuck but you always take us from glory to glory and with you victory and breakthrough are the only option Come on. 
for the areas of blessing that I'm living in right now. But anything in your life that doesn't line up with the word of God, you declare, I know. I know. I know. I know. Breakthrough is coming. Here's how I know. By faith, I see a miracle. I'm not looking with my natural eye. But in the spirit, oh. Are coming. Promise is coming. I used to know this man of God, Kim Commit, and he used to say, I'm somewhere in your future, and you look much better than you look right now. You look pretty good tonight, but in the spirit, I'm somewhere in the future, and you look much better than you look right now. You look like promise is coming to pass. Looks like you're walking in wholeness and blessing because the path of the righteous gets brighter and brighter and brighter. So one more time, I shout it out. I know breakthrough is coming. By faith, I see your miracle and your miracle and your miracle and your miracle and your miracle. Amen. <laughs> He's a good God. Shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated tonight in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Aren't you glad that God is still on the throne? And he's doing some incredible things. The Apostle Paul said, thanks be to God who gives us the victory. I have the victory. I keep the victory, not because of what I've done, but because of who he is. Amen? Well, this evening, we welcome you here to the Harv, and we're glad that you're with us. And if you're a first-time guest, we want to encourage you to text the number on the screen and let us know that you're here because you are a VIP. And sometime this week, you're going to receive a gift from our pastor. We want to encourage you to do that. We want to connect with you. We want to connect to you and believe God to do some incredible things. Also, we want to make you aware of next steps, that our next next steps is November the 18th. It's where we will cover how to follow Jesus, to connect to his church, to discover our purpose, and to serve others. Jesus said this. He said, the Son of Man came not to, to be served, but to serve. The church is exactly that. We are here to serve this world, to help them know Jesus Christ. Amen. We're again, we're so glad you're here. Text the number on the screen. God bless you. I didn't know I was intro. Was I supposed to intro him? Praise the Lord, everybody. <laughs> Pastor Don, run up here real quick. Run up here real quick. Run up here real quick. Really, really, really quick. Can we thank God for Pastor Don Sanderson and his beautiful bride? Amen. This is our Dean of Students at the Valor Christian College School of the Spirit. And tomorrow, him and his beautiful bride will be taking a trip across the pond. Mm -hmm. He will be traveling to Europe. Mm -hmm. He is almost finished with his doctrine degree in theology. Practical theology. Practical theology. And we want to pray for him as he's traveling across that water because he has to get back here to train some world changers. Amen. So if you could, everyone, stand on your feet, stretch your hands this way, open your mouth and begin to bombard heaven with your prayers. Come on. Come on. If you don't know what to pray, just plead the blood of Jesus over his life. Father, we thank you. We love you. We magnify you and we glorify you this evening. You are God and God alone. There's no one like you. And God, you do, you have, and you will always protect us. Your word says, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high God will abide under the shadow of the almighty. And God, we pray for Pastor Don and his beautiful bride as they're traveling tomorrow to learn 
more about you to go deeper in the things of God. We plead the blood of Jesus over him, over everyone that would be on those planes. We pray for the pilot, the co-pilot, all of the people that would serve on that plane. I thank you that peace is their portion. You have not given this man, his wife, or any of them the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So God, we thank you that your word declares that you go before us and you make the crooked way straight. Yes. We're thanking that you're already in our tomorrow because you have blessed us today. Yes. So give yes. him the strength, the ability to go and learn and do all that is required of him. Mm. And we look forward to hearing the amazing things mm. that you will do over there as he comes back to love on your people, but more importantly, love on you. In Jesus name we pray. Let's keep praying. Why don't you hook arms with the neighbor beside you? Let's pray for our church family and our pastor. Father, we thank you again that this is the day that you have made and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we pray for our pastor and we pray for his family. We pray for Miss Joni. We pray for Austin and we pray for Ashton. God, we thank you that they are surrounded. Yes with your angels. We thank you that you are providing for them in ways they couldn't even imagine. We call them healed. We call them delivered. Come on, church, pray. Come on, let's pray like we know how to pray. We thank you that the fire of God is stirring in their belly. We call them blessed when they come into anything and go out of everything. We thank you that they are the head and not the tail. We thank you that they are above and not beneath. We pray for the leadership of this church. Every elder, every care pastor, every usher, every, every, every worker in kid harvest, all of our volunteers and young people in next harvest. We thank you that they are blessed. We pray for our executive team. We pray for local church. We pray for city harvest network. We pray for our Russian harvest church. We pray for Amanda and Fiaz and Jared. That's in Pakistan. We thank you that signs and wonders are happening in that country. God, we thank you that the same thing that's breaking out in this place It's the same thing that's breaking out over there. And it's not only just there and here, but it's also in our houses. We thank you for our spouses. We thank you for our spouses to come. We thank you for our jobs, our jobs to come. We thank you for raises and bonuses, those that are going to receive raises and bonuses. God, you promised. You promised us things coming into this year that we haven't seen yet. We're not looking forward to 2019. We're looking for you to do something now. Now, faith. Come on, pray. That's it right there. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things we haven't seen yet. We thank you that this is still the greatest year of our lives. We thank you that this is the year our families will get saved. We thank you that this is the year we will walk in healness, wholeness, boldness. We thank you that this is the year. Everything you promised us before we came into this year, hallelujah, we're going to see it come to pass before we go into the next year. And God, we believe that so much so that we give you all the praise, we give you all the honor, and we give you all the glory. If you believe that, take the next 30 seconds and give God praise for what you haven't seen yet. Come on, somebody, lift up a shout of praise that something good is about to happen to you, to your family, and every single person that's attached to you. What if I told you that your miracle is on the next shout you lift up to God? Hallelujah. Come on, let's stir ourselves up a little bit. We're going to get in the word today, but let's open up our hearts. Let's open up our minds. Let's forget everything that happened to us before we walked in here and let's lay hold of everything we couldn't even imagine. I speak over your life that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered to the heart of any man the things that God has for you. I dare you to praise him like you ready to see some things, ready to hear some things, ready to feel some things ready to possess some things. Come on, the joy of the Lord is
is your strength. If you shake off, and listen, shake it off, shake it off. Shake off every demonic, satanic, negative word that you thought about yourself, everything that someone spoke over you. I dare you to start shouting, start praising, speaking in tongues, in the joy of the Lord. Come on, something good is about to happen. Some of you act crazy. Something good is about to happen to you. Something good is about to happen to this section, this section, this section, that section, that section, that section. All of y'all sitting in the back, you better get ready. Something good is about to happen to you, your family, your friends. I heard your Holy Ghost and I'm going to get off of it. But I'm telling you, your next praise is going to fix some things in your future. Woo, my, good God of mine, I feel like running now. I said this next praise, I said this next, y'all sit down with me all you want to. Stand there. But some of us is going to give God that's going to fix things in our future. I'm telling you, some of y'all, like, listen, the devil's been messing with you and your family. I dare you to shout that mess out. Woo! Woo! I'm telling you, you have enough power in your shout to dismiss your frustration. Some of you are frustrated because you refuse to use the force of your praise to get you across the line. But if you're like me and you're ready to see God move, I dare you to praise him until it shows up. Come on. Come on. Come on. I just, re I was reminded we're not going to praise. We are praise. We're not going to worship. We are worship. We're not going to experience freedom. We are freedom. We are deliverance. We are prosperity. Shout like God made you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. I don't have reason to be here but since I'm here since I'm here I'm going to magnify the Lord oh magnify the Lord with me and let's exalt that name I'm getting ahead of myself Woo! Woo! I'm gonna make it easy I feel a corporate anointing every camera lock in lock in right here camera you lock in you lock in Sound man, sound man, you got me sound, you good? You ain't got to touch the board, light guy, you got me lit enough, I know I'm dark, let me up right now. Okay, ushers, you good? You good? You ain't got to do nothing, right? Okay, I'm going to break every rule for the Holy Ghost just for about 20 seconds. You got me locked in, Miss Heidi, give me a thumbs up. Okay, I want you to step off that camera. Hey, you over there, step off that camera. Just trust me when I'm telling you, step off. I'm locked, I'm not moving. I'm not gonna move, step off. All you sound men over there, stand up. All you sound men back there, lighting guy, get up. All you ushers, get up. Every musician, stand up. Chris already in the spirit. Every musician, get off your instrument, stand up. Put it down, as a matter of fact. I don't want nothing to hinder this praise that's about to go forth, that's gonna, I'm not gonna move, I'm not gonna. Woo, there it is, right there, there it is. I dare every single person to shout unto God. Yeah, that's it right there. Let every devil know. I refuse. I'm not going to move. Come on, keep shouting. Keep screaming. Keep praising until you feel the glory of God. Hey, hey, hey. Until you feel the glory of God on your love. Shout. Yell, dance, jump, what? 
worshiping with us. I hear angels in here joining in with this great chorus. He whom the sun sets free, all the free people shout right now. All of those that want to be free. That's it, that's it, shout right now. y'all bringing the anointing in here that's all that's all of us now come on just gonna turn that's all of us that's all of us that's all of us the holy ghost was waiting on us to get on the same page tonight if you're ready to leave here change i dare you to give a praise as if you know what's coming to your life Listen, I hear an old preacher speaking to me. Keep shouting. Weeping may endure for a night, but I prophesy to every World Harvest Church member, every person watching online, joy is coming to you tomorrow morning. I believe tomorrow, sanctify yourself today, because tomorrow, He's about to do wonders with your worship. Oh, talk to me. God's going to do a wonder with your worship. I dare you to give it to him right now. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I feel a yes, Lord, in here, Wendell. I feel a yes, Lord, in here. I feel a yes, Lord, in here, Pastor Tim. I feel a yes, Lord, in here, Nikki. Come on, Nikki. Come on, Laura. Come on. We fighting a good fight of faith, and I'm going to use my weapon. My praise is a weapon. Woo. Glory be to God in the highest. Man, I thought wearing a live microphone was going to prevent me from sweating. But I forgot who I am. I'm a praiser before I'm anything. Before God called us to preach, play, us, record, he called us to do this right here. I dare you to go ahead for the next 30 seconds. I'm going to move. Go ahead and practice what you're going to do for eternity. <laughs> Amen. See, see, with some, see some of you, see, you know, the preacher at times or the man of God or um, your motivational speaker, can I be like my father for a second? I am not your motivational speaker. But sometimes, you know, the people are under this mindset that we that's up here, Cameron, don't go. I need y'all to shout right now. Just start. Come here. Come here. That means I need an usher real quick. Keep shouting. Keep shouting. I said, keep shouting. Come on, come on, come on. I got a word. I'm going to give you the word. I promise you. I promise you I'm going to give you the word. We haven't talked at all. But I don't need you to talk. I just needed you to be near me the other day. And I'm just going to tell you this right now. Yeah. Get ready for a different doctor's report. <laughs> I want you to shout that thing out right now. Woo. 
All you musicians, get around your brother. Get around your brother. Get around your brother. He needs this. Listen, we're going to preach the word. I promise you we're going to preach the word. But while the Holy Ghost is moving, I dare you to stir the pot with your... Stir the pot with your shout. My God, every person that needs a different doctor's report, the next time you go, I challenge you to lose your mind for the next 17 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. with him some of y'all that need a doctor's report a different one can I help you get out your seat and at least walk <laughs> at least walk my God knees are being healed right now he on lap number two Cameron is on lap number two people are falling out in the Holy Ghost if you need a different doctor's report I dare you to praise them as if it's already here. I promise you, I'm gonna preach this word tonight. I'm a preacher tonight. I'm a preacher tonight. Woo! I saw my brother skipping. He said, Some of us are about to skip out of our mess. Some of us are about to skip right out of poverty. We're about to skip right out of sickness. We're about to skip right out of depression. I dare somebody to act undignified that God just turned your situation all the way. 180. Woo. Woo. I feel this type of anointing here, Elder Canfield. We're about to rewrite this book. We're going to give it another title. Why Revival Lasts. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't worry. We're going to put a word on it. This emotional experience that you're having is going to be word based tonight. It's going to be word based tonight. My God Almighty. Okay. Okay. I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready for the word. I'm ready for the word. Y'all don't mind if I talk to every devil that's been on my back the last 48 hours, do you? Y'all just watch me. I'm going to show you what you're supposed to do. Hey, devil, the next time you try to bother me the way you've been bothering me, I'm going to remember that I have a hundreds of brothers and sisters that praise with me that no weapon. I said no weapon formed against us will be able to prosper because I'm a praise until it falls off of me. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. Yeah. Devil, you're defeated. Devil, you are defeated. Devil, you are defeated. Yes, sir. You will not get my brothers. You will not get their family. You will not get their joy. You will not get their peace. You will not have their mind because we have the victory. Okay. 
All right. All right. While you're standing, grab your Bible. Grab your Bible. Grab your Bible. While you're standing, grab your Bible. While you're standing, grab your Bible. I give honor to my pastor, the doctor, the rev, the reverend, Dr. Rob Parsley. Give honor to him and his family, to all the leaders, I love you. And to my beautiful bride that's in the back that can't hear me, that's taking care of all our crazy babies. I love you, sweetheart. You are the apple of my eye. I'm alive because of my wife today. I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Amen. Turn real quickly to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. And go to verse number 6. James 4 verse 6. Now get used to sweeping through your Bible tonight. Okay? Welcome to Bible study. Okay? That's probably about all the shout y'all going to get from me tonight. Until we get in this word, then I'm going to get excited about the word. Because guess what? Jeremiah just didn't throw words out there. He didn't say it was like fire that shot up through my bones. Look at y'all. They're like, Elder, you don't know the word. Yes, I do. Read the whole verse. He said it was the word that was like fire that moved through his body. I'm going to speak this over your life. Whether you want it or not, you're going to catch on fire tonight because you're going to get at least seven scriptures. That's going to be gas on that little flame that's flickering in there. Amen. Man, that's exciting. Y'all should have got excited about that. James chapter 4, verse number 6. And it reads like this. But he gives more grace for this reason. Okay? Here's the reason why he gives grace. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Tonight, we're going to talk about that P word, pride. We're going to talk about pride. But here, here's the exciting thing about pride. Pride has a wonderful twin brother. For you women, a beautiful twin sister. It's called humility. So the title tonight, overarching title tonight, if you need one, as you're taking notes, as you're using the notes in your phone, if you don't have a notebook, or if you like me, just destroy your Bible and write it in your Bible. Because the overarching thing tonight is pride versus humility. Pride versus humility. You can take your seat. What is pride? Pride is a proudful person. What is pride? Pride is a person that thinks more highly of themselves than they ought. Okay? People who are prideful are arrogant individuals. Okay, but well, watch this. Here's a real simple definition of pride. Y'all writing it down? You typing? You ready? Pride is what God hates. Pride is what God hates. I've been here now for 17 years. And in the 17 years I've been here, because I really listen to words, um, I pride myself on hearing what you're saying past what I heard. Okay, because my dad always taught me, son, you don't have to ask questions if you listen and observe. A lot of times we miss our future because we're too busy talking. Understand? So, but in the 17 years that I've been here, there's certain pillar statements that I've heard before I got here, and even while I've been here for 17 years, um, statements like this. See if you remember, remember some of these. Expectation. Talk to me. Is the breeding ground of a miracle. 
What about this one? You can't believe for a seven tier wedding cake until you believe for a. Okay, things like this. There's four characteristics that show that a person is alive. The first is growth. The second is appetite. The third is discharge. And what's the fourth? Reproduction. Tonight message us dealing with pride I'm reminded of this statement we don't hear it no more but I'm telling you it's in the molecules and the atoms that make up the pews that you're stand, sitting on and that your your feet on and that you ushers are walking on and recording on and sound on and you go to school and, and it's all in the atmosphere and this is one we don't hear a lot no more Brother Wendell, but it's still true today, and it's this. Everything in the kingdom you're a part of is diametrically opposed and mutually exclusive to the kingdom that you came out of. I'm going to say it again for some of you young ones that's been here, as if I'm not young. The kingdom that you are now a part of is mutually exclusive and diametrically opposed to the kingdom that you came out of. Then he would say something like this. The only way you go up, you first must go down. Up is not up. Down is up. And, and this month we're going through why revival tarries and there's two things that stick out to me the most about this book the first is this when i read this book okay let me not be pride, prideful and tell the truth when my wife read me this book <laughs> we were coming back from a quick family vacation and we wanted to read the book and i was driving i've been in the car for six hours and I said, Lisa, why don't you pull that book out and read it? And she started reading me the book. Well, Elder, that means you didn't read the book. Okay, let me repeat to you what I said. My wife read the book. And if my wife read the book, that means I read the book. Because if I drove as husband for six hours, she drove for six hours. I just helped half of y'all marriages right there because husband and wife, you're not individuals. You're one. So when one does it, let me make sure I talk calm and you get it. The other does it. And when one doesn't participate, you didn't participate. We're going to get pride out tonight. So she read this book. And the first thing out of the two things that stood out to me is that Dr. Leonard Ravenhill and Germaine Brunson's opinion is the greatest preaching influence on our pastor's life. When I read this book, I could have sworn Pastor Rod Parsley wrote this book. And when you get it, because you're going to get this book and you read it, you're going to see that for yourself. But the second thing is the reason why we're going to deal with pride tonight is this statement that he said. Throw it up there on the screen, team. If you kneel before God, humility, you will stand before men. This isn't a textual message tonight, Valor. This isn't a prophetic word. This is simply topical. We're going to deal with the pride that's in our lives. Can I tell you a story? So about a year and a half ago, after every Wednesday night service when Next Harvest was in Murphy Hall before they moved down to Bradley B, I would come in here and I would do church. And when church was over, I would hear the young men and the young women in the gym and they'll be doing all kinds of things. The music's up, they're dancing and they're talking, they're having blasts. And of course, young men was down there either throwing a football, but most of them would shoot basketball. So because I love young people, I pray I'm 70 years old still being invited to youth conferences. Because you know why? The youth will always be the future for tomorrow. 
and I'm shooting basketball with him and I'm hanging out with him. And this one young man that goes to school here, um, just like every young man, young men at HPS, some of you knuckleheads over here today always want to challenge Elder G in basketball. I don't know what your problem is, but you want to challenge me as if I asked to even play your ugly self. So he's talking junk and we're on the basketball court. And I was like, all right, you talk all that junk. Let's see who can shoot the best. So we would do best out of three. You know who won. We would do best out of five. You know who won. We would do best out of 10 and you know who won. And this was happening on weekly consistency. So the last, this one time we came in, you know, when I play him, I beat him. And he said, Elder, I bet you couldn't beat me one-on-one. You too big, you too slow, you can't even jump, I destroy you. And me being the competitor that I am, I started talking junk back to him. <laughs> Knowing that he's faster than me, because I've seen him play. Knowing he has more handles than me, because I've seen him play. Knowing that he could jump off vertical, and I'm barely hitting the bottom of the nets. <laughs> he's more athletic than me. You understand? And here's what I got going for me. I'm smarter and I'm stronger. So I'm talking junk. Okay. And so weeks and weeks go by and I said, okay, you know what, man? I'm done talking to you. Next week, have your stuff. Bring your ankle bracelets. Bring your best shoes. Invite your friends. Invite your brothers, your cousins, your mama. Your, I don't bring them all because I'm going to destroy you. And listen to what I said to I'm going to humble you in front of all those people. You got to be careful of being competitive because it is truly the second cousin to the spirit of pride. It was game time, came in here in church. Now, what he didn't know was that I was jumping around in here, acting a fool, dancing, leading the service. Well, all I was supposed to do was take the offering. And I, you know, you know, you know, y'all know how I do when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. That's all it takes for me. You know, we go crazy and I'm trying to give it to y'all. I ain't going to tell the preacher who's sitting on the front row. Tried to give them the mic. No, oh, you got it. You got it. Not knowing I got a basketball game I got to play because he invited all these people. Go over there, lace the shoes up, and it's time to play. Boom, I hit the first shot, hit a little three on him. He was like, oh, you really can shoot. And I said, duh, I beat you like seven weeks in a row. And then all of a sudden I look up. I'm going somewhere. Y'all hear me? I'm going somewhere, okay? And I look up and the score was two to eight. That little joker is up six points on me. <laughs> he got his mama, he got his daddy, he got his brothers, he got his cousins, the football team, the basketball team, the soccer team, and somebody of the school lacrosse team. I don't even know how they got in there. And they talking junk to me. And I said, oh, oh y'all talking junk to me? It was time to go to work. So the score went from two to eight. So it was two to eight, and then I tied it up. And then somebody won 12 to 10. Guess who that was? <laughs> Guess who it was? It was him. <laughs> and you know what I did when I lost? I said, hey, hey family, y'all all get over here. Hey, team, you all get over here. Gather up real quick. Pull out your phone. It took me like 10 minutes to recover because that look, that six points coming back wore my tail out. I said, y'all got your phone out? I said, come here, T. Come here. On the count of three, I want y'all to hit record. One, two, three. Hey, everybody. This is Elder Germain Brunson. I'm here in Murphy Hall. Next harvest after service. We having a good time. For weeks and weeks, me and T, we've been talking junk to each other on the basketball court. And, and he challenged me in basketball and I accept it. And tonight, I just want you to know, I want the world to know, I want all your friends, I want, want y'all to send this video back to T, that T beat me tonight. He beat me tonight. I have no excuses. He was the better basketball player than I was tonight. And I want you to know that this young man beat me. And I said, you got the video? All right, I'm gone, because I'm about to die. I need to rehydrate. <laughs> but here's the amazing thing. They recorded that. They took videos. See, the younger generation, believe it or not, I'm like six months still in the millennials, okay? So I do get a little mad when y'all talk about us. I'm gonna leave that alone. We Instagram, we Facebook, we tweet, we're on Snapchat. 
Here was the amazing thing about that, y'all. When I went home, because I was ready to laugh and have a good time, because he beat me. He, I lost. I didn't see one thing on Facebook. I didn't see one thing on Instagram, Twitter, or Snapchat. You know why? Because I decided to humble myself in a situation when pride wanted to rise up. And the moment that you decide to humble yourself opposed to be prideful, guess what? Even though you lost, you won the battle. See, pride, always remember this, okay? Please write this down. I could have gave that young man so many excuses, but can I tell you what an excuse is? Excuses are no more than glorified lies. Okay? Excuses are no more than glorified lies. Please write this down. And prideful people are glorified liars. When you're making excuses, you are a glorified liar of why you couldn't try again. Okay, here's the deal. You remember I told you that he was faster, he was quicker, he can jump higher, he had more handles? Guess what? I knew that. And here's what's so important. Watch this, write this down. Admitting the obvious always eliminates pride. Admitting the obvious always eliminates pride. Here's the reality. I should have never played that boy Elder Newtor. You know why I shouldn't have played him? Because my two abilities didn't over Trump or didn't trump his seven qualities. Uh, write this down. You ready? This one's going to hurt some of us just like it's hurting me. Um, please, here it is. Stop thinking you can defeat Goliath without God on your side. Because the Bible clearly teaches us that prideful people God opposes. Which means he's not going to be around prideful people. Please turn. Go over there to Proverbs chapter 6. This ain't even in my notes, but I'm, I, we, gonna, we, gonna, we just going to work the book tonight. We going to work the book. Go to Proverbs 6. Proverbs 6. And go to verse number 16. Proverbs 6. Verse number 16, watch this. You remember I told you that pride can be simply defined as something God hates? Watch this. Proverbs 6, verse 16. These six things the Lord hates. Yes, seven are an abomination to him. Could you please look and see, look at what the first one is? A proud look. We're not even going to read the rest. We're just going to stop right there because any person that's prideful, I love you. God hates you. Six things he hates. Seven is an abomination. And the first thing that he turns away from is a man or a woman with a proud look. See, okay, flip over there real quick to Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 2. Proverbs 11, verse number 2. Look what it says here. When pride comes, then comes shame. But with the humble is wisdom. Some of y'all's translations would say, when pride comes, disgrace. So let's look at the definition of what disgrace and shame is. You ready? Shame is this, a painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. Let me read it again for those that are writing. Shame, a painful feeling of humiliation or distress caused by the consciousness of wrong or foolish behavior. Disgrace, everyone say disgrace. Disgrace is defined as this, loss of reputation or respect, especially as the result of a dishonorable action. 
See, when you're prideful, your reputation goes down the drain. <laughs> See, when you're prideful, you lose respect for yourself. Therefore, no one can respect you. You understand? That's why I, they're going to respect me. Well, look how you pop in your neck. <laughs> Preach, Jermaine. Look at how you, you have an attitude. Look at how you won't look at a person in their eye. Look at a person when they're walking down the hallway and you find an excuse to tie your shoe as if you have not as if you don't have on slip ons. <laughs> when you disrespect yourself, people will disrespect you. Please write that down. When you disrespect yourself, people will always disrespect you. See? And here's the problem with pride. Pride has the ability to disqualify you from your purpose. See, a lot of us aren't work walking in the purpose of God today. It's because we're prideful. Oh, but I got good news for some of you here in just a moment. We're going to talk about that twin brother in just one moment. But we got to expose this pride that's in our heart, right? Listen, don't allow what God is asking us to kill to stop you from getting to your tomorrow. Oh man, I'm gonna get in trouble with some of, some of the men that's been in my life here in this church. See, my dad, both of my dads, my natural father was in the Navy. He was a very dangerous person in the Navy. But then my, my other father-in-law, my other father, my father-in-law, he is a successful businessman. So is my father. Both of these guys are what you call self-made men. But here's the difference between these two guys and most people that's sitting in this church. They refuse to say they did it and not give God the glory. A lot of self-made men that's successful, they have reached a level of success, but I believe God wants to take them past success, but they refuse to acknowledge that God gave them the, the ability to do it. I don't need anybody. You know, here, here's a good way you know it's probably, I'm the best. Nobody can do what I do Nobody can move the people like I can move the people. Nobody can sell cars like I can sell cars. Nobody can, can study the word like I can study the word. Why, why is that little young whippersnap up there preaching? I've been in this church for 40 years with pastor, and I've never had the ability to stand on the platform. Listen to yourself, Satan. I didn't ask for this. I didn't come to Bible college to be a preacher. What? I didn't come to Bible college to be a pastor. What? I didn't come to Bible college to be a traveling evangelist. What? No, I didn't ask my mom and dad. That was half the reason why my mom didn't talk to me for six months. Because all I told her was, I'm just going to chase the call of God on my life. When I came to school here, can I tell you what the peak was for me? This is when Pastor was doing Reformation America. Is that, how, is that what it was called? Elder? Reformation, Ohio. Reformation Ohio. And he was traveling, Pastor Tim, throughout the whole state of Ohio, David. And he was going other places. And this is what I came to Bible college to do, bro. I wanted to be on the tear up, the set up and tear down team. And I wanted to get in there before he get in there. And I wanted to set the whole business up. I wanted to sit back in the cut and watch all these people get saved, Ryan. And then when everybody left, I wanted to tear it down, get on the bus and go to the next city. I didn't ask for that. And if you smart, you won't because now you on the front line of the devil's attack. Stop being prideful to think that the one revelation God gave you is going to take you around the world. Here's the truth about it. The revelation wasn't for the world. It was for your knucklehead. 
and you want to speak what God said to you to make us look bad, you are the most wonderful person on the face of this earth. It was for you to pray. It was for you to live it out so that the person that's on your job can ask you, hey, why are you so different? Ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost. God told me he was going to deliver us with this word tonight. So don't allow pride to disqualify you from your real purpose. Okay, here's three characteristics of a prideful person. You ready? The first is this. Prideful people are anti-submissive. Anti-submissive. Go to 1 Peter chapter 5. Come on, we got to move quickly. 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5. And we're going to read at verse 5. You ready for this, Elder Lowe? This is good, man. Prideful people are anti-submissive. Okay, that means that they have a problem submitting. Okay, here's the definition of being submissive. You ready? Write this down. Just keep writing it down. Submissive is to give over or yield to the power or authority of another. Okay, to be submissive, to give over or yield, yield to the power or authority of another. See, some people have this, this, this mindset that everybody in the church wants, wants somebody to submit to them. You need to submit to authority. Well, why are you so mad with the person that's quoting the Bible? Uh-oh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 5. You ready? All right. Likewise, you younger ones, submit yourselves to the elders. Okay, look at me. I did a real deep study on that. Like I pull out every concordance. I went to every commentary I possibly could, and they all said the same thing. Guess who Paul was talking about when he said elders? Oh, better question. Guess who Paul wasn't, guess who he wasn't talking about when he said elders? Elders of the church. You younger ones. Every person hit yourself on the chest, and I don't care if you're 90 years old, hit yourself on the chest. You younger ones, submit yourself to the elders, meaning somebody that's older than you. If you're 79,000 years of age, there's somebody that's 79,001. And that is the person that you're supposed to submit yourself to. Why? Because they have one more day on you, meaning they know more than you do. Okay. Uh, let's go to James chapter 4. Come on. Come on. And we're going to look at verse number 7. Because here's the real problem. Some of you think you're having a problem with people. The issue is you're having a problem with God. I can show you in verse number seven. Oh, smile at me. It's, it's, come on. I'm excited. Y'all got to get excited. Come on. Y'all was just dancing and running. I'm dancing and shouting over this word because it's fixing me. Therefore, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil sometimes that devil is you because you ref refuse to yield yourself or give yourself over to a greater power okay you're anti-submissive here's the second thing about pride for people they're anti-serenity serenity means this calmness peacefulness, tranquility. It means to be unraveled. It means to have a clear conscience. See, you could never be around a prideful person and the atmosphere is calm. Prideful people, ooh, listen to me. Ooh, Jesus, I'm going to get in trouble, but I feel the anointing. So if you have a problem with me, come see me. Don't put me on Facebook. Just come see me. How about do the Jesus thing? If you have an issue with me, come talk to me first. 
You will never be around a prideful person and the atmosphere is calm. They always stir up strife and cause issues. Most prideful people are the most opinionated individuals on the face of this earth because they think they're always right. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3. Amen. Y'all like elder is on something different tonight. I am because here in a moment, I'm going to invite you to come to the altar and ask God to search your heart to get all the pride out. Because see, when you humble yourself, things begin to happen that way too. Philippians, y'all excuse me for taking so long to get over there. Chapter 2, verse 3. You ready? Let nothing be done out of strife or conceit, but in humility let each esteem the other better than himself. Okay, so can I break that down for you in Elder Germain Brunson's terms? This would probably be Uncle G Money's terms to my nieces and nephew. When you say something about somebody that's negative, you're a prideful individual. Okay, let's move on from that one. And here's the third thing about prideful people. They're also anti-selfless. Okay, here's the definition of selfless. You ready? Having little or no concern for oneself, especially in regard to fame, position, or money. A selfless person have Little or no concern for oneself. Meaning they're not selfish. Because guess what, y'all? Every selfish individual is self-promoting. Prideful people promote themselves. They talk about what they can do more than what God did through them. But here's the deal. If there's pride, there's also humility. See, can I tell you something about pride, y'all? Pride, pride is to a man what kryptonite was to Superman. Meaning... Pride decreases your power and subtracts from your effectiveness. Okay? Pride is the glue that keeps you stuck in your past. Woo. Uh, pride will keep you stuck in old wineskins. I was talking to my sister. My boo, Miss Stephanie Harrison, and she taught me this. This is what she taught me. You want to write this down. Pride will cause you to put on things that don't fit anymore. Because, <laughs> see, pride makes a man or a woman comfortable. <clears throat> Some of us don't possess what we supposed to possess because we refuse to move. Because we like all the yes men and yes women that surrounds us. Pride breeds disaster. But here comes the turn. But humility creates deliverance. We got to get out of here, but I got to give you four things about the humble person. Is there any humble people in the room? Be careful. Don't be, don't, don't. Don't be, don't let self-humility become pride. Y'all missed it because you're laughing. Don't let self-humility become pride. How you doing today? Oh, I'm so blessed and highly favor the Lord. That ain't what you put on social media. Self-righteousness will always produce pride. Self-righteousness will always produce pride. Self-righteousness 
will always produce pride. When you talk to me about another man or woman more than you talk about yourself, you are a prideful individual. And what you're trying to do is take the attention off of you and put it on somebody else because you don't want nobody to see the real you. But humility. The first thing a humble person possesses is this. They're God's first priority. God will always choose a humble person first. Can I tell you, no pride. The Bible says no flesh will glory where? In his presence. When you're prideful and you think you're with God, you're pretty much with yourself and others. But God will always choose the man or woman that humbles himself first. The second thing about a humble person is that they walk in God's favor. <laughs> I didn't say man's favor. They walk in God's favor. And I want to speak this to somebody tonight. Here in a moment, you're going to come to this altar and you're going to ask God to search your heart. And I'm telling you, he's going to reveal some things there. And the moment you get it out your mouth and you ask God to forgive you, I'm telling you a new wave of favor that you've never experienced before. It's about to come on your life. Not only your life, but every person that is attached to you is not about to experience man's favor no more, but you're about to transition into God's favor. That means things that's been hidden from you is now about to be revealed for you but it starts with getting the pride out the third thing is um, about a humble person they receive honor they receive honor humble people receive honor while you're writing that down go real quickly to Proverbs chapter 18 12 real quickly Proverbs 18 12 this is good. Proverbs 18, 12. It reads like this. Before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty. That means before destruction, an arrogant man will receive it. They're going to receive and walk in destruction. But watch this. But before honor is humility. Can I tell you what honor means there? That means every man and woman tonight that humble themselves before God, here's what's going to come your way. Look it up in the Hebrew. Riches are about to come your way. Prosperity is about to come your way. The splendor of God is about to come your way. Abundance is about to be your portion. And this is how you walk in all of that. You just got to get the pride out of your heart. It's that simple. Get it out. The fourth is they have legacy. Okay. Ooh, Pastor Tim, you going to protect me on this one? You got me? If I ask most of you in this room who is the greatest basketball player in the world, who are you going to say? LeBron. Michael Jordan. Elder G. I love you. I love you. He's been a part of my wrath. But I want to say, did anybody watch the opening season, the opening games of the NBA? Woo! Did anybody watch the Boston Celtics game? Does there, anybody know a man by the name of Jason Tatum? Plays for a second year from Boston. Played at that school down in Durham, North Carolina. That, oh, God, I almost got sick to my stomach. Ooh, can't say that. I almost lost it. Played there under the greatest college coach ever, Coach K. Well, every time he touched the ball last night, I noticed that they really didn't talk about Jason Tatum. They talked about the man he spent the entire summer with by the name of Kobe Bean Bryant. See, I'm the guy that will have a legit argument with you and you will get mad at me. I'm going to start arguing with you because you're going to get mad at me. So I feel like I need to yell with you. But I'm the guy that can, can probably convince you on your bad day that Kobe being Bryant was better than Michael Jordan. I, I probably on your bad day can do that. But I thought it was strange that they never talked about Michael Jordan at all last night. They talked about Kobe Bryant. 
Can I tell you why? Because Kobe's making sure he has legacy. Wow. <sighs> See, never be so great today that no one talks about you tomorrow. See, pride, ooh, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. Pride says, I'm always going to be better, but humility says, I'm going to make someone great. Because humble people give everything they have to someone else so that they, listen to Jesus. Did Jesus tell us, and the works that I do, you're never gonna accomplish what I did? The works that I did, you maybe get close to me, but you'll never get there. No, why? Because he wasn't a prideful man. What he said and what he taught us and what he showed us what to do and what he left us in the Holy Ghost, he said, greater works shall you do. Because humble people will always have legacy. And here's the last thing and I'm closing. Humble people are always exalted. James chapter 14, last time I'm going to ask you to turn over there to James. I know some of your hands are tired because you ain't flipped through the Bible in this long. Don't be prideful. James chapter 4, um, verse 10. It reads like this. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will exalt you or lift you up. See, exalted there means to raise higher in your dignity. It means to have happiness and honor. It literally means to go to a higher level. See, please know this. Prideful people will always stand before God, but only the humble will be invited to sit with him. Tonight, we have an opportunity to sit with the king at this altar. Yes, he's God our Father. He's our Savior. He's our Lord. Life of Christ. He's the prophet. He's the high priest. But he's also our king. And when you, you look at how kingdoms were established, you could never just walk up to a king uninvited. If you would dare think you were that powerful, can I just make it plain for you? If you were that prideful to go before the king uninvited, that would be the last breath you took. And then if you were so blessed to stand to be invited in the presence of the king, you knew you had to bring a gift before the king. Because most people didn't want to go to the king just to say hi. They can say hi to him when he was going through the streets. But when people wanted to be invited to be in front of the king, to have a conversation with the king, they had some questions they needed answered. And tonight, as we're taking the tithe and the offering, because it's offering time. I want us to bring a gift. Before we come talk to the king at the altar. This past Sunday, we kicked off something that we did last year called Psalms 100. 
And this was a thanksgiving offering unto the Lord. Here's the thing that I love about thanks, thanksgiving offerings. Can you say that? Thanksgiving offering? Thanksgiving say it again. Say it again. One more time, everybody. You don't give a thanksgiving or a thankful offering to the Lord looking for anything to come back. This is you saying, God, thank you for allowing me to stand before you. And I love you with all my heart. Yes. You've been so good to me. And we believe in that around here. We're not ashamed about it one bit. And we're asking every single person here at Columbus today, those that are watching online on Facebook Live and RodParsley.tv, those that are catching it because some of you are sharing it, and some of you that's going to watch it tomorrow, when you're going to watch it on Saturday, when you're going to watch it on next Tuesday, we are not ashamed to come before the Lord with offerings in our hand. Because even though we're not looking for anything, we also know that it gives us access directly to him. And so for over the next four or five weeks, five weeks, ending on November the 21st, the Wednesday night before Thanksgiving, where we're going to do communion together, we're asking every single person to give $100 above their offering and their tithe. Why? What are you trying to get out of us? Nothing. I'm trying to give you access directly to the king. All right. All right. There's some things that's on your heart that you want to ask the king. But when you have access to him, you have that opportunity. So ushers, I believe we have offering envelopes. Distribute them through the aisle. We're not, here's the deal. Some of you can give that $100 today. Some of you can give $500 today. Some of you can give $20 today. If you did $20 for the next five weeks, you will reach that goal. And we are encouraging you. Listen, we're bold about this. We are a church that gives. You know why we're able. Did anybody watch social media and pastor talk about the hurricane relief that happened that we're doing, that we're currently doing yesterday. Okay, you need to go on Facebook. You need to go on Instagram. Because see, there's videos that show what you're doing. See, this offering allows us to be able to touch people just like that. And that's what this church is about. Guess what? We're not going to be anti-selfless. <laughs> We're not going to be anti-serenity. We're not going to be anti-submissive. We're going to be humble people. Come on, talk about yourself. Okay, so everybody get that and do something. Here, here's what I'm asking you to do tonight. Join with me and my wife individually and give $20. Let's start this journey tonight. And for the next five weeks, let's let nothing get in our way of giving an offering towards the Lord. I know some of y'all want me to try to manipulate that, but I'm not going to do it. Not going to do it. I love my wife. So because I love my wife and my two beautiful kids, I give them gifts that's not on Christmas. <laughs> I know some of y'all mad at me. Let's do that Phil Thompson song. Yeah. So if you're doing this, make your checks payable to WHC if you're going to do like me and my wife do text that $20, $25 to WHC to 45777 and then if you're watching online, bring that camera in you so and this is what I'm going to have the ushers do ushers prepare yourself here at the altar it's 827 What's the announcement? Give them to me. I'm going to do it right now because for some of us, we're going to spend some time here at the altar asking God to get the pride off our lives. Just Sunday morning. Just Sunday morning. Yes. Hey, did y'all hear who's going to be here Sunday morning? 
Miss Joni Parsley is going to be teaching us the word this Sunday morning. I'm excited about that. So this is what I'm asking every person to do. Here in a second, I'm going to ask you, come and bring that gift. Valor, I don't care if you have 50 cents. I'm telling you, if you do something, God's going to give you that seed. Man, you know what? If I have time tomorrow in chapel, y'all remind me to tell y'all about a seed that I sowed by accident. Where I didn't have money for four weeks and I didn't ask my mom and dad for anything. Remind me. I'm just telling y'all, you should sow a seed. And I don't care what it is. Don't let nothing get in your way. So Sunday morning, Miss Joni Parsons is going to be here with us. You know she's going to drop some nugget on you that's going to change your life forever. So those that are watching online, there's a banner there. I want you to click that banner. Join in with us. We're about to get ready for all of those that want to at 729. We're going to come to the altar. We're going to sow our seed, believing we have access to ask God to get the pride out of our lives. Okay. Some people are not going to come to the altar. You have nothing to do. You're just going to be prideful and walk out the door. I love you, but it's just, I just showed you in the Bible what it is. But some of you are at least going to come down here and say, Lord, reveal to me the hidden sins and secrets in my heart. Because I want to stand before you. Hold that seat up in the air. And some of you, put it down real quick, sorry. Some of you may not have the ability to walk up here. Don't worry, our ushers are going to come find you. All you got to do is when you're worshiping, just put that seed in the air and they'll come collect it with a big smile on their face because they love Elder G for doing this to them. Okay, now hold that seed up in the air. David, throw me my, throw me my phone. I don't want to be prideful and y'all think I ain't doing this. Hold it up in the air. Father, we love you. Your word clearly says, the proud you will oppose, but the humble you will show favor to. Your word clearly says that you give honor to those who humble themselves. God, your word says in Colossians that you will always choose the humble first. Your word says in James, that if we humble ourselves, you will exalt us. So tonight, God, this seed that we're going to sow, this journey of this Psalm 100 seed, all of these five weeks, give us access to ask you what you want us to lay down so that you will invite us to sit with you. We want more of you, God. We want more of your glory, more of your power, more of your strength, more of your joy, more of your happiness, more of your honor, more of your splendor, more of your riches, more of your prosperity. Whew. But we know it begins with us coming to the altar and humbling ourselves. So we bless you tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, y'all. Bring that up. And for every person that wants to spend some time at the altar with me, please do it online, family. We love you. We'll see you here Sunday morning as Miss Joan is going to bring us a powerful word. Receive my worship. All of my, all of my worship. Here's, here's my worship. My offering unto you, Lord.